and they will not let this thing go away. Yeah, for the fourth week in a row, they are they are the biggest game in the country. I mean, I'm watching the uh, I'm watching Sports Center come on at seven o'clock uh, every Sunday morning, and it's just, it's it's the same story, Colorado. <laughs> Welcome to the Dark Times channel. And before I get started, make sure you guys go ahead and hit that like button for me. And if you're not new to the channel and you enjoy the content so far on this channel, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button for me as well. And so let's go ahead and get into it. Recently, Deion Sanders sat down with CBS in a 60 minute interview in which he was very candid, in which he spoke very honestly and very passionately about who he is, what he is and what he's trying to accomplish. Have you ever been so clean that you walked in and somebody looked down at you then they looked at themselves, they had to check themselves because you were so clean? I have that effect. That's the vibe you're getting. I have that effect. And one of the things I love about sports is sports is a microcosm of how society works. Of course, not in totality, but in general. Being agreeable and having this yes sir, no sir, boss kind of mentality is almost a requirement for the so-called black man working in corporate America. Can you talk? Yes sir, boss. I can talk. And so when we see a Deion Sanders and we see somebody like Deion speaking unapologetically, speaking boldly, being who he is, we tend to root for that because that's something a lot of us will never know. That's something a lot of us will never know. And that's an experience that we can all enjoy. Even if we're not experiencing it ourselves, we can experience it through Dion. And so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people are cheering for Dion Sanders. You have a lot of people that have never watched a college football game in their lives, wouldn't know anything about the sport. But this is why Deion Sanders is able to galvanize people to be able to root for him every Saturday and be able to cheer for his success. Who's the best coach in college football today? Let me see, let me see a mirror so I can look at it. <laughs> you feel that? What? You think I'm gonna sit up here and tell you somebody else? And I've seen a lot of takes on social media about Deion Sanders not doing anything for black people. He left Jackson State and he should have stayed in the HBCU. Dion is only about himself. He's only making money for himself. He's not bringing in dollars to the so-called black community. I see a lot of that. And a lot of those takes come from people and individuals that I actually have a deal of respect for. But nevertheless, I think it's ignorant. And I'll tell you why. Because what Dion Sanders is doing is similar to what a Muhammad Ali did. Muhammad Ali wasn't trying to generate black dollars for the black community because it wasn't within his means to do so. A lot of the things that so-called black people want and wish for as far as building a, a Wall Street, a modern day Wall Street, a modern day black Wall Street, the desire is good. But the reality of what you want is the total opposite. That's never going to happen. We've tried that. We've tried to collectively build together, but every single time it's been sabotaged. And why wouldn't it? <laughs> why wouldn't it be? You think people or the powers that be are just gonna sit back and allow something like that to happen? That's never gonna happen. But on an individual level, every once in a while you get an individual like a Muhammad Ali, like a Jack Johnson, that's unapologetic and they're successful and they inspire individuals and they inspire the community to do better on an individual level. What more do you want? What more do you want? And so I think it's selfish and somewhat short-sighted for individuals to look at Dion as the black savior that's gonna lift up the entire black community and bring back economic stability within the black community. That's not gonna happen. They would never let that happen. And so you get an individual like a Deion Sanders who's doing his thing and doing what he's supposed to do for himself and for his family and on the way and by the way, inspiring others to do great things, helping others to do great things. And so the only thing that we can really ask for a Deion Sanders is not to be a sellout. 
we have our Oprah Winfrey's, we have our Tyler Perry's and people of that nature. And their approach is their approach. It's definitely not the Deion Sanders approach. Their approach is the keep your head down, no sir, yes sir kind of boss kind of deal. Don't rock the boat. Don't say anything that's gonna make certain folks uncomfortable. And that's the norm. And so when we get a Deion Sanders, who's the total opposite of that, all you really can do is appreciate it and appreciate it and value it for what it is. Don't try to make it into something that it was never meant to be, something that it could never be. Sanders encouraged players to enter the transfer portal. Straight talk was appreciated by some, but is, is this scorched earth policy good for, for college football or for the kids? I think truth is good for kids. We're so busy lying, we don't even recognize the truth no more in, in society. And this was by far my favorite segment of the interview. Because this is the main thing that I've been hearing, especially when it comes to Dion. What he's doing is not good for the kids. Going to Colorado and getting rid of all those players and suggesting that they jump in the transfer portal is not good for the kids. It's too hard on the kids. And truth be told, that's not something that they really believed. It was just another excuse that they were trying to use in order to discredit Deion Sanders and what he was trying to do. Because make no mistake about it, if Deion Sanders would have kept all those players or a good majority of those players, he would have been looking at a similar record of what they had last year. There's a reason they went 1-11. They weren't very good. They weren't a good football team. They didn't have good players. They didn't have good coaches. And somebody like Deion Sanders, with his personality and being who he is, he knew he was on a short leash. They were waiting for him to lose. They were waiting for him to have a losing season. And so Deion Sanders knew he was up against it. He knew he had to win. He couldn't just come in there and be mediocre like another coach would have been able to do. And y'all know what I'm talking about. He knew he had to be twice as good as many of us know that we have to be. You can't just be average. If you're trying to reach a similar level of success that your counterparts are trying to reach and that have reached, it's not enough to be just as good. You gotta be twice as good. And that's an uncomfortable reality that many of us have to face, but it is what it is. And so when this interview asked Deion Sanders about his approach and about his scorched earth approach when it comes to these kids and suggesting that they get in the transfer portal, he asked Dion, you don't think you're being a little bit too hard on the kids? And I love Dion's response. I love Dion's response. Dion's response, he said, no. I'm telling these kids the truth. Something that America has forgot how to do. <laughs> no lies detected, as they say. Something that America has forgotten how to do. And that's tell the damn truth. There's gonna be certain kids and certain adults, for that matter, that just aren't cut out to do one thing or another, and that's okay. But the sooner you tell that individual, the better off they'll be. For a lot of those young men that were cut at Colorado, a lot of those young men will go on to play at different universities, maybe lower levels, who knows, whatever the case may be, but they'll get an opportunity to play. And then they can find out if football is for them. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Either way, that's a good thing. But the sooner you find out what you're meant to do in this life, the better off you'll be. You don't need somebody like Deion Sanders lying to you and lying to these kids, telling them that they're good enough to be something that they're not. That's just wasted time. Deion's trying to build a program in which the majority of his players have a shot to play in the NFL, like at Alabama, like a Clemson. Those schools are a pipeline for kids to go to the NFL. And so Deion Sanders is trying to build something similar. And so why lie to these kids that maybe aren't cut out to go to the NFL and that's okay. They can get started on their engineering degrees. They can get started on their programming degrees. They can get started on their robotics degrees and get real. We need more engineers. We need more programmers. We need more doctors, more lawyers, and all those things. All those things are good. Everybody's not meant to play football. And so that's what Deion Sanders was talking about when he said, I'm not lying to these kids. I'm gonna tell them the truth. I'm trying to win a national championship and I need NFL caliber players to do that. And so that was by far probably my favorite segment of this 60 minute show. He thought he was gonna get Dion with the kids. He thought he had him with that one. But when you tell the truth and you're unapologetic, there's nothing that they can do. 
Now, if Dion would have danced around it and pussyfooted around it, it would have looked a lot different. But Dion's approach was, you know what? I'm going to tell it like it is. I'm going to tell you why I did it, and I'm going to tell you why it's a good thing. And you can never go wrong with the truth. As they say, the truth will set you free. You left Jackson State, and you left quick. What did you tell those I kids? Didn't what did you tell those kids? I didn't leave quick. That's why oh, I, uh... I didn't leave quick. I left when I was supposed to leave. We tried to press Sanders on the circumstances surrounding his abandoning the mission at Jackson State. Abandoning the mission? Please. These college coaches switch jobs like they change underwear. They bounce around from college to college and nobody says anything. They don't say the same thing when a Nick Saban switches jobs. They don't say the same thing when a Jim Harbaugh. And they sure don't say anything when a Lane Kiffin switches jobs and bounces around from school to school. They don't call it abandoning the mission. It's just business as usual. That's how things work in life. You're unhappy with a situation, you go somewhere else. You get another opportunity, a bigger and better opportunity, a pay raise, you leave and go somewhere else. You fit in where you get in. In other words, you get it how you live. Abandoning the mission. That's why it's important to pay attention to how people say things and how they word things. One twist of a word or use of an adjective can change the entire narrative around. And so this reporter knew exactly what he was doing. But he didn't stop there. He's hinted the school's lack of forward thinking may have factored in his decision. But on this topic, he was about as elusive as he was returning punts for touchdowns in the NFL. And so notice how this same reporter tried to get Dion to talk about family business. Jackson State and what happened at Jackson State is family business. If you want to talk about all the success that Dion had at Jackson State, that's one thing. But to try to stir up controversy, that's not even there talking about he left on bad terms. He didn't leave on bad terms. Dion led Jackson State to back-to-back -back winning seasons. His first year, they had 11 wins. The second year, they had 12 wins. The most wins they've ever had. You have to go all the way back to 1962, in which they had 10 wins. And so you're talking about a coach that not only led Jackson State to winning seasons, but also landed them the number one recruit in the nation. Something that's never happened. Something that's never been done in the history of HBCUs. All these schools were aiming to get Travis Hunter. And Dion's the one that scooped in and got him. And put Jackson State on the map. Had everybody showing up for Jackson State games. And so Dion did his thing and he did what he was supposed to do. And so shout out to Dion for holding it down and not putting family business out there. Because that's exactly what they wanted him to do. But he didn't fall for the bait. He didn't fall for the okie doke. And a lot of these individuals within sports media were sick Saturday night or Sunday morning when Colorado pulled out the win. They were sick to their stomach. They were down 28-17 late last night. We all thought that the run was over because it, it just looked like Colorado State was going to finish that off. But here we are waking up on a Sunday and they will not let this thing go away. No, for the fourth week in a row, they are they are the biggest game in the country. Uh, and I was out what would have been the biggest game in the country last week. And it, I mean, it felt great, but it, it was still in the shadow of Dion. I mean, I'm, uh, well, you're trying to recover for, or just barely get home. And I'm watching the, uh, I'm watching Sports Center come on at seven o'clock uh, every Sunday morning. And it's, just, it's, it's the same story, Colorado. Another week, we got to talk about this uppity Negro. And so they can't take much more. And a lot of them are looking forward to this Saturday when Colorado's up against Oregon and they're going to be without their best player or arguably one of their best players in Travis Hunter. And like I said earlier in a previous video, losing Travis Hunter is like losing two players. He's one of the best players on offense and definitely by far probably your best player on defense. And so it's definitely going to be an uphill battle, which is going to make it all the more exciting even before the Travis Hunter injury. That's a game that Colorado, on paper, has no business winning. You're talking about an Oregon University that had years to stack four-star and five-star players. And Colorado is just now at a place, now that Dion's there, is just now at a place where it's desirable for recruits to come. And so Dion's done the best that he could with the transfer portal, but He's not even close to what he's going to be next year. And so on paper, like I said, this is a game that Colorado should definitely lose. But that's why you got to play. That's why you play the games on Saturday and let the chips fall where they may. 
And so this is going to be an even more exciting game than last week. This is going to be an exciting game. They're going to have to show out. They're going to have to show up and show out because they definitely don't have the talent to match up against an Oregon, on paper at least. But we're going to see how it goes on Saturday. Either way, I don't think the momentum is going anywhere. I think the momentum that Dion in Colorado has is here to stay. Dion's already exceeded any expectations that the media and everybody else had for Colorado because nobody had Colorado going 3-0 and in their first three games. And there's nowhere for Dion to go but up from here. His team's gonna continue to get better. He's gonna continue to attract top level recruits. And he's gonna continue to build his team and do things the way he wants to do them, his way. And let me know if y'all got a chance to see the 60 minute interview and maybe some of y'all have some different thoughts on that. So feel free to go ahead and chime in in the comment section. And as usual, peace and chaos.